Python is probably one of the most popular programming languages in the world. And also Python is super versatile. It can be used for machine learning, data science, or even web development. So in the previous videos, you guys showed me that you really enjoyed that video called How to Become a Python Backend Developer. When it comes to self-taught developers, one of the tricky part is that there are so many resources out there. I'm pretty sure that you're already feeling really overwhelming and that's okay. I think that the key to being a successful self-taught developer is actually having a roadmap in mind. I am going to give you a Python roadmap so then you can learn step by step how to become a Python developer. Here is a myth over here that most people believe that you have to become a Python expert to be able to become a Python developer, which is not exactly true. What I would tell you is that you don't necessarily need to know everything about Python, which will make you a Python expert. What you do need to know is that you need to actually know the key things about Python. For instance, like knowing Python as a programming language, knowing how to program in Python, also knowing the right tools and the right frameworks and libraries, that at the end will let you become a actual Python developer. Since this video is for beginners, I will provide all the resources that I can find and things that I would recommend for you down in the description down below. Make sure to check out those resources and let's go. Step number one is to learn the language. You can't really start without actually learning the language. I know that a lot of beginners, um, what they stuck on is actually picking the language. So if you're already picked Python as your first programming language, you're almost halfway there. You just have to get started on learning the actual language. One of the two most common ways that people learn is by either reading the documentations or watching some sort of tutorial to help you to learn that language. So in the following steps, I am going to show you two different ways and I'll give you some of my recommendations on how exactly you can start and what to learn. The first one is called Python 3.10.6 documentation. So this is written by Python experts. It helps you to understand the essential concepts about Python and it also has a step-by-step -step to help you to learn about Python. As a beginner, it could be a little bit hard sometimes from reading documentation and trying to follow through. One of the other resources that I would recommend is actually looking into videos online to help you to walk you through the process, which leads us to the second part of my recommendation, which is picking a video or a tutorial to walk you through how to learn this language. One of the course that I highly recommend for you is this course called Complete Python Bootcamp from Zero to Hero. This course is listed in the description down below. I am not sponsored by it by any means. This is just a really great course that I came across to recommend to my mentees. This course teaches you the basic concepts about object-oriented programming. It talks about all those concepts in Python and it really walks you through to just to learn about Python as a programming language is. One of the things that are, I would say, a highlight of this course is it doesn't talk about any frameworks or libraries for Python. It mainly focusing on the concepts about Python as the first part and then also the data structures and algorithms as the second part by using Python. So I think this course is great for someone who's looking to learn Python from the start to finish. It's a great course for beginner. Step number two is actually to build up your tech stack. What that means is let's say now you already know Python. The next thing that you need to think about is what kind of Python developers that you wanted to become. And the reason that you have to think about that is because based off what kind of developers that you can vision yourself to become, you picked 
different types of frameworks and libraries that can help you to gain that kind of experience and to build up that kind of tech stack. Before you even pick a framework, you need to ask yourself, do I want it to learn web development or do I want it to use Python to work on desktop apps? Or do I want it to use Python because I wanted to become a data scientist or a data analyst? I, I'm going to just let you pause this video if you haven't figured that out and then come back and watch the, the next step of this process because you got to have to figure this out first before you can actually pick the right framework for you to learn. So yeah, if you are uncertain about what kind of Python developers that you want to become, definitely try to figure that out first before you pick a framework and start building your project. So let's say that you are inspiring to become a web developer, you're interested in looking into web development, there are two different types of frameworks that you should look into. So the first one is called Django, which you probably heard that a lot because it's really, really popular. So Django is a collection of Python libraries that allows you to build web applications. And it's used for both in front end and back end. And it's also considered a very high level of web development framework. Um, so if you are thinking about, you know, becoming a Python developer and working for a bigger company or even like a more established startup or even a mid-sized or a larger company, you should definitely check out Django. And I will give you a course right here in the description down below. Definitely check it out. Um, it's one of the Udemy course that I would recommend if you are thinking about learning Django as your tech stack. The second framework that I want to talk about is called Flask. Now, Flask is another backend Python framework that also used a lot in web development. However, it's not as extensive as Django, I would say. It is also used a lot in web development, but it's used for a more simple and lightweighted web application. So if you're looking for, you know, just a framework to build out your application, your projects, and you're thinking about starting as a freelancer, I would say learning Flask to add on to your tech stack as a web developer would be a great choice. Oh, by the way, if you are really interested in more extensive information about how exactly you can become a backend Python web developer, definitely check out the video that I made previously. Um, it will help you a lot and giving you a lot of information about how you can get started on that. Okay, so the next option besides web development is the desktop development. If you are learning Python to get into desktop applications, here is the most popular frameworks that you should look into. I hope that I pronounced this right. It's called Tanker. I'm going to put the uh, motion graphics here so you can uh, check it out also. Um, so this is a GUI library that is integrated by default in the Python language. And it has a, a lot of documentations and tutorials that you can find on how you can start building desktop applications that can run in a lot of the OS systems. And I know a lot of people aren't interested in, you know, learning about building desktop because nowadays a lot of people are moving away from desktop, but there are still a huge space in desktop apps because if you think about applications like Notion, Slack, or Spotify, they also have applications very natively on the desktop app. So it's still relevant and it's still a really good career path that you should look into. The next one is called PyQt. So it's P-Y-Q-T. PyQt. Um, this is a free software that is also used to develop a better UI than Tanker. 
and it can also add more functionalities to your desktop application. So if you are looking for something that's free and more advanced with a lot of uh, functionalities, definitely check out this framework as well. And if you are getting values from this video, definitely give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who you think would also benefit from it. We are almost, almost, almost there. So stay with me. When it comes to Python, a lot of times people talked about using Python in data science and using Python for data analytics. So for those of you who are interested in becoming a data scientist or a data analyst, I would say that learning Python is a great choice. And um, a lot of times we are using Python for data visualizations. So let's let's stop for a little bit and let's talk about what is data visualization. Data visualization is converting data to meaningful charts for a better understanding of the problem or even of some sort of research. Let's talk about some of the popular frameworks for it. Uh, the number one framework that I want to talk about is called Matplotlib. This is a very famous library for making a 2D or even 3D data visualizations. So just imagine all of those possibilities with using this framework. And one of the reasons that I pick this framework is because it's super popular amongst data scientists and data analysts and even machine learning engineers. The other framework that I want to talk about is called Seaborn. And this is another library that is built on top of Matplotlib library. And it also offers more customizable options in data visualizations. For data visualizations and also for statistically plotting and works very efficiently with another very popular framework for data science is called Pandas. If you're learning a lot about data analytics and data science, you'll definitely heard about this framework called Pandas. And this is like a very popular Python framework to use for data manipulations. So Seaborn can be also used and worked with Pandas very well, and which makes it also very popular amongst data scientists and data engineers. Oh, well, 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 hopefully this video at least give you some ideas to where to start, how to start, what to start. And here is a video about all of the Udemy courses that I found that using different projects to help you to build and learn Python and definitely check out this video. And also make sure to check out the other videos about how to become a Python backend web developer as well, because I think these videos are going to help you a lot on top of this video that I created. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Adios.